Hi everyone, Mr. E here with another Tinkercad SimLab tutorial, and in this one we're learning about the new trace function, which allows us to trace different aspects of our design and graph them based on our simulations. So in my basic Tinkercad design here, I have three spheres all raised off the work plane and each set to be a different color. Now, one reason that you might use traces is to see how your different materials interact in your simulation. So for example, I'm gonna click on this blue sphere and I'm gonna set this to be ice and I'm gonna enable a trace. Then for my yellow sphere, let's set this to be uh, soft wood and again, enable a trace. And for the red sphere, let's set this to be steel and enable a trace. Now with the trace enabled, what happens when I drop my shapes is they of course bounce, but I also can see the trace, this line that's drawn, which is the motion line within the bounce. And if I adjust my design slightly to allow these shapes to actually bounce on, let's say not a flat plane, but an angled plane, and let's just make this ramp into grid, which turns it into part of the, the grid work plane here, we'll see that we can not only trace linear motion, but all the motion. And I can analyze how the different materials interacted and moved along our planes. We can also graph our traces. So once we've run a simulation with traces enabled, we can click on this graph icon. And here you can actually see different graphs based on your different traces. Each color corresponds to a different shape based on the colors that I assigned in the solids when I was actually designing them. And there's a number of different types of graphs that we can create and we can trace along time. So I can trace its velocity, acceleration, I can trace its energy. And here we can compare the different kinetic energy of the different objects. So how steel has more energy in this simulation than ice or wood or the other materials that we set. We can compare the different materials and the motion or momentum or energy or position of them as they progress through with these graphs. You can add a second graph if you want to compare multiple things at the same time here, and you can export this data by copying it or exporting it in a CSV spreadsheet format. Now something else you can do is actually place a tracer like a connector, and what this lets you do is instead of tracing, let's say, a, a shape, it could trace a specific point in your design. So let's go back and modify this design slightly one more time. So for example, I'm going to add another shape and this shape is gonna be hit by our spheres as they fall. And what I'm gonna do is place a trace specifically on the top edge of this shape, like so. And I'll change the trace color to something that we're not already using. And just so everything doesn't fall off into total oblivion, let me just adjust my the size of my ramp here a little bit and make this a static shape. All right, let's run our simulation again. And we'll see that we have another trace line, but specifically not to the center of the shape, but to the point, the point where I put that trace. So if you wanna analyze a specific point in your design, how that moves, or let's say for example, the acceleration or the energy or the momentum, and I'm just gonna remove the other shapes from our graph so we can just see this one point, you can. You can analyze a specific point and how that's impacted across the time of your simulation. Now, if you wanna learn about the other features of SimLab or how to use the other connectors and things, check out my other tutorial videos. Thanks so much for watching, and of course, please don't forget to subscribe.